the old ball coach is, is no longer the old ball coach in Columbia, South Carolina. Hey, everybody, Scott Spritzer with Matt Holt. He's the vice president of business development at CG Technologies. And we're talking SEC action. We've got Vanderbilt taking on South Carolina. And, Matt, when I played the Commodores early in the week, and we do these midweek, these videos, but when I played the Commodores on Monday morning, we had heard rumors for a while now that this was going to be Spurrier's last year, that when the season wrapped up, he was going to call it quits. We didn't know that at the end of Monday that Steve Spurrier was going to call it quits. And we heard his press conference on Tuesday. I thought it was very Spurrier-esque. You know, it was kind of like I, I heard him a couple of times say, when you see the inevitable, you might as well take care of it right now rather than waiting for anything to get worse. And this is best to turn things around. So first of all, some thoughts on Spurrier and the fact that he's quitting midseason. I mean, obviously, you get the feeling if he's undefeated right now, He's still in it to win it till the very end of the year. Absolutely. And I think what's interesting about this game is which opened at minus four and a half and went down to three is all of that line movement happened prior to the Spurrier announcement. Yep. So I think a lot of that line movement was probably based on the fact that South Carolina is 92nd in the country in game efficiency rating this year, a lot more than it had to do with the fact that Steve Spurrier was retiring. Um, I agree. Look, if they had just won a couple more games, then he's probably not calling it quits in the middle of a season. But I think he believes in his mind that he truly is doing South Carolina, the university, a favor because sure. this allows them more time to go find a coach, good assistant coaches, and prepare for the future. We're doing these things at the end of the season becomes a real challenge and getting ahead of recruiting. I took them at face value. I really did. You know, there's times when coaches get up there and they'll, they'll use coach speak, and you can see right through it. I really took him for what he was saying, took him for his word, and that he really does think he's doing the right thing, not only for himself, but for the South Carolina football program for the remainder of the season. And so I don't think there was any, you know, coach speak about it like we see out of some guys. What younger people don't really know, let's say guys in their early 20s, in the mid-90s, in the late 90s, before he took that job with the Washington yeah. Redskins, he was on par with guys we see now like Urban Meyer, um, you know, even Nick Saban when it came to recruiting. If the old ball coach, Steve Spurrier, wanted you to come play for the Florida Gators back then, you played for the Florida Gators. Obviously, that team was a national power every year he was there basically and what he did at duke and even what he did at south carolina three straight 11 win seasons 18 straight home wins extremely impressive i have no problem with this guy calling it quits when he did the problem is you mentioned their efficiency ratings being so low they've gone through quarterback after quarterback after quarterback it's almost like to no fault of their own they're in the situation they're in right now. Yeah, absolutely. You could see it in that home loss to Kentucky that they just didn't have a quarterback that could competently compete in the SEC. And, you know, you're not supposed to – I know Kentucky's up a little bit mm -hmm. this year, but losing at home to Kentucky is one of those games you just cannot lose. And you could see how deflated this team sure. was after that game. People forget what he did to, to South Carolina, where that program was before he started sure. there. And to bring that team to three straight 11-win seasons and competing for national championships, championships at South Carolina just simply amazing you look at the offense right now and they're averaging about 340 yards per game on the season total yards per game having a real rough time even hitting 300 yards in SEC play and now they're taking on a Vanderbilt team that's starting to make improvements as the season progresses and like I mentioned and I'm giving it away here obviously my video best bet for the week took the points early on this one as soon as I possibly could and uh, it's a situation where I don't know what you think but I don't believe South Carolina gets any spark with Spurrier stepping down right now. There's only so much you can do, and it's not like let's go out and win one for the old ball coach. As he even mentioned when he was asked by the press yesterday, he came out and he said, we'll think about maybe doing a celebration or a, a tribute to Steve Spurrier a couple of years down the road. We're not going to worry about that right now. Your thoughts on this particular game? Yeah, absolutely. I think you get... At, you know, you're getting points with the team with the better efficiency rating. Vanderbilt 82nd mm -hmm. in the country, North, uh, South Carolina 92nd in the country. So you obviously all have to like the fact that you're getting points with what on paper is the better team. Sure. But when you look at this Vanderbilt's defense, what they've done, they held Western Kentucky to a season low. They've held a lot of teams, uh, really high-powered offenses, to season low on points. Sure. So I love what James Franklin's doing on that side of the football. Uh, a little bit nervous now what's going on with their offense. They don't always score. I think they put up 12 in their opener. Right. against the Western Kentucky team that's normally in shootouts. Uh, you know, if they could score at least 17, 20 points, that might be all it takes here. I, I definitely like that side. I wouldn't want to be laying in this spot. It's my video play of the week is the uh, Vanderbilt Commodores plus the field goal over the South Carolina Gamecocks. And uh, we've got our third 5% main event of the college football season going on Saturday's slate. We're 2-0 and 
with these plays so far this season. We don't release them every single week. It is my top play. We stamp it with main event. It means top play status. So our third goes this week. We look to make it 3-0 and so far this year. We've cashed with Stanford over Central Florida and with Iowa State a couple of weeks ago over the Kansas Jayhawks. That play available right now, and you can purchase it either on an individual basis or part of the $69 all-access weekend. He's Matt. I'm Scott. More to come right here at wagertalk.com.